Welcome back to the workshop guys, thank you for joining us for another essential skills lesson. Now today I thought I'd go over the most important bit of kit you can get as you're starting out as a hobby smith or beginner blacksmith and that is of course the fly press. So what is a fly press? Well it's this bit of kit and we use it pretty much every single day here in the workshop. It's got a screw in the middle, you spin the handle around the bit of tool in in the center goes up and then when it comes back down it does so with a good bit of bite um, obviously it's not a power hammer but when you're starting out in business one of these will certainly do the job now um, this is as I said an absolutely essential bit of kit um, and this is my number six I've also got a number four I've got a number two somewhere and we've got the bar press as well but we'll leave those for another video um, if you're starting out in smithing, I would advise going for at least a number four or bigger. Uh, I think they go up to a number 12 is probably the largest I've seen. Um, you can get H frames as well as the C frame that this is. You can do just about every single process that you can with a hammer and an anvil. Um, apart from it's got a lot more force than you have swinging a hammer. So you can do all sorts of things that you can also do on a hydraulic press or on a power hammer as well. So let's have a quick look at some of the tooling and then we'll show you what it can do. So let's take out a tool I was using yesterday. Um, I was doing some joggling for some gates. So I've got one of my joggling tools in there. Um, what should we do? Let's do a staple. Nice and easy process to start you off. So um, I've just got a square block. Uh, this particular fly press has a 26 mil hole in the center. So it takes 25 mil black bar, uh, which is quite nice. It's nice and cheap to make tooling. All the tooling I've got for this, I've either made myself or acquired. Um, it also pretty much all fits my hydraulic press as well, so that's quite handy. Now let's line that up in the center there. Do I need a spacer in here or not? No, I don't. Now you can be quite precise or you can wing it. So I'm going to wing it. Let's get a little bit of steel hot. Now as you know in blacksmithing there are only five processes and that is forging, forming, bending, joining and cutting. All right, there's lots of different ways you can do all of those processes, but you can do pretty much all of that in the fly press. So I'm gonna show you some of the different ways that we can do some of those processes. All right, let's go. Shove that in there like that. And one, two, three, give it a whack. Nice, easy, staple. Uh, so there you go, you can quite easily bend up hot bits of steel. I can also do these cold. Um, there is a bit difference in tolerance and stuff when you're doing hot and cold work on the fly press. So if you're making hardware, things like uh, sliding bolts and stuff, little staples like that that hold uh, the bolt itself, absolutely brilliant. Especially if they're driving into little slots, you can plug weld them on the back. Uh, really handy process and really quick to do, especially if you're doing large batch of production. Alright, so we're done with that one. What else have we got here? As you can see, we've got a bit of an eclectic mix of things going on down here. Um, and there's tools for every process. Now, the advantage of the fly press, um, at the top here, if you want to zoom up, I don't know if you can do that, uh, we do actually have a depth stop on these. So if you're buying yourself a fly press, make sure it comes with its collar. Um, otherwise, you've got no way of setting the depth. Uh, so what I need to do with this is simply spin this around, and my fly press will come down a bit further. Are we far enough down? Yes, we are. Good. Now this of course is a modified old fashioned bolster chisel, one that was floating around a toolbox and I needed a bending tool and this one's quite handy because it's nice and sharp Woo! and you can see it bends a bit more than 90 degrees, that's why we like it. Now you can do this quite gently, you don't actually have to absolutely go for it, there you go. So we've got a nice 90 degree bend there. I can also use the same tool for chopping stuff up. Now the nice thing about the fly press is it comes down in exactly the same place every time. So if you set your tool in up and actually bolt things down, you don't have to worry about things wandering off too much. But there you go, cut that bit of steel quite nicely. Now the other thing that we can do uh, with a hot chisel like this in the fly press is use it for chiseling in, chasing in lines. This one quite nicely come in and do that. For doing it hot, fly press, absolute treat. 
and the tool's coming down a straight line and isn't moving around on you. So uh, that's a bonus. Okay, the, the next process that I can do in this is of course forming. Um, so here I've got just a big bit of plate welded to a bit of pipe. That's my bottom tool. And then I've just got a steel ball welded on a shank. I find my little gizmo here, there we go. Now the dishing tool, brilliant bit of kit. Chuck that in there in the middle somewhere. And gently work it in. Now that metal's got to go somewhere, so it's buckling. But you can get some quite cool effects by buckling your steel in the fly press. So there you go, uh, you can make some quite interesting uh, candle pans, some quite interesting decorative things, almost flower-like in form uh, by dishing uh, thin stock underneath the fly press. Now if you take your time and you work in concentric circles, you can get a perfect dish with this. Um, you can of course do it cold, which is the same process again. If I was doing this with a smaller, smaller blank, um, it would dish that into a perfect candle pan. So that'd be quite nice. So that's the dishing tool. Um, great bit of kit and handy to have and an awful lot easier than swinging a great big ball hammer uh, for hours on end trying to make hundreds of candle pans. Now well, something else we can do in the fly press is of course fullering. And we can do this to isolate stock. You can do this if you're gonna forge a pair of tongs. And the nice thing about the fly press is you can do an awful lot of it on your own, in your own workshop without needing extra pairs of hands. So there's a tong blank forged out in what, two seconds? Well, the next step in forging a pair of tongs is of course punching a hole in the middle of it. And we can do a hot punching under it too. One punched hole. So in the next step, we'll do the riveting up. And we can do that under the fly press as well, which is really handy. All we need is a bottom snap, a ball bearing, and our top snap in the fly press. Wind it down and make sure it's all gonna line up nicely. There we go, and we can take our ball bearing out. Save that one for later. Get my tongs in there. That way you. And then what I need to do, especially if you're working on your own, is just to pack everything up. So what I like to do is bring that down until it gently bites, and then I can find some packing material just to hold everything up. Right, let's get this warmed up and rivet this together. And that's how you do a rivet in one heat. Now, it's absolutely brilliant having a fly press on hand for doing some of these operations. And if you want to check out how I actually make wolf jaw tongs, uh, I'll put a link to in the description uh, as well as a tab up as well. So you can click that and see how we forge out the rest of them. Now, the fly press doesn't only get used for small jobs. Um, this one typically gets used for straightening bars. And we use it pretty much every day of the week for straightening out the mess that the steel merchants give us our steel in. Chunk of inch square. And the fly press can quite easily Handle that, no problem at all, as you can see. Blend set up without even trying. And that's inch square. Um, I think the biggest section that I've straightened under this or bent under this is probably 100 mil square. Um, and that was probably hot, probably wasn't doing that cold. But uh, I haven't found a bit of steel yet that this doesn't want to move around the place. So this is the jig that I probably used most out of all the other bits of kit in the workshop. Um, I'd certainly go to my fly press uh, nine times out of ten for straightening uh, and doing that sort of thing. So uh, get, make yourself one of those, really handy bit of kit. So that's the basic processes covered of what we can do in the fly press. Uh, we've done some forming, we've done some forging, we've done some bending, we've done some cutting and of course we did some riveting which is joining. So um, as you can see you can do most processes in a fly press, uh, a really handy bit of kit. Now there's one that I really enjoy doing um, and I suggest you go out and get yourself one of these get your maker's mark. Now I had this one specially made for me. Um, I think that this process is spark erosion, which allowed them to do some really cool text. I can mark up all of the work that comes out of the forge, put my name on it, put my business name on there, so that uh, people in the future know that I made it, which is always a nice touch. Now it's always a good idea to draw around your stamp where it's gonna land. 
Send it down range. And boom. And there we go, guys. Get your name in your work. Well, there you go, guys. There's the basic processes covered by the fly press. It's my number one piece of machinery in the shop. Uh, and it's certainly what I would suggest running out and getting yourself one. You can pick them up for just a few hundred quid or a few hundred dollars. Uh, they're absolutely dirt cheap and an awful lot more uh, cost effective than power hammers or hydraulic presses, especially if you're just starting out. Um, we've been running professional forging now for over 10 years uh, and we still use this on a daily basis. So it's an essential bit of kit for the workshop. Um, I hope you guys found this video interesting and useful. Let us know what you think in the comments. Um, as always guys, you can help support us through Patreon Check out what we've been up to on Instagram and we'll see you here next time in the workshop. Cheers, guys.